Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Filipino American Woman Project. I am your co-host Jen Amos, and as always, I have Nani Dominguez with me. Nani, welcome back. Hello, hello. Yes, and this is one of those talk show episodes once again because last week we had released a wonderful conversation with Cynthia Ciadot. And so what we're starting to do, if this is your first time listening to our show, is one week we interview someone and then one week we have a commentary type of episode where because we are getting busier with our podcast and we're beginning to expand, we have to slow down. And more importantly, and more importantly, I've really enjoyed just kind of digging deeper, like with our relationships, not just the people in our community, but even the people we've interviewed. I mean, with Cynthia, even after you had to get going, I probably talked to her for like another hour, you know, and I love that we are slowing down in a sense to really cultivate these relationships. And so before I get ahead of myself, just wanted to see if you had any initial thoughts about that. Yeah. It just makes me think of another interview we just recorded with Kat. Mm -hmm. and how we were talking about the pandemic lifestyle and how we are kind of being forced to make more intimate connections with each other um, since we've all been at home and everything that we do now is virtual. And so it's not like we just run into people or end up talking to people by nature of being in the same place at the same time. It's like if we find ourselves in a Zoom room together, it's because we're choosing to be here. And so I think that that's maybe like one good thing that uh, can stem from the, or that we can take away from the COVID-19 pandemic era is Mm -hmm. just deepening our connections with each other and making more intentional connections with each other and really focusing on relationship building instead of those kind of service level interactions that we're so used to just moving from one place to another in our daily routines. Yeah, I definitely hear you on that. You're right. It's like we wouldn't be on a Zoom call unless we didn't want to be there. And I think that, you know, in this virtual world, it actually really accommodates people who, let's say, in a normal group setting wouldn't speak up. It's like here you're able to express yourself differently. And when the spotlight is on you, like literally everyone has to listen, you know? And so I think for me personally, I feel like as an introvert, it's really given a voice to introverts who maybe are not as like, who maybe don't want to be like the star of the show, or they don't want to be like the funny person in the group of friends, you know? And I think about that, even in my own personal experience, having recently been involved with a group of people to kind of just see myself, like kind of have this outer body experience and see myself just kind of sitting there and like trying to figure out where to insert myself, like in a group setting and then naturally just being drawn toward the loudest person, you know? So I just love in a sense that these times, like you mentioned, have fostered more intimate conversations with people because what else are you going to do when you're staring at someone, you know, on a screen and I love it and, and I'm here for it. And so when I don't, have that in real life, it's almost jarring. It's like, oh, like, like you don't want to have a deep conversation with me. Like it's, it's, yeah. and I take for granted and we, we talk about this offline and I, I'm going to have more to share on just Miss Jen and Nani in a upcoming episode. Like we definitely take for granted just how safe of a space we've provided for each other here to really tell our story for the length that we want to tell it. Right. As opposed to, let's say sometimes in a group setting, it's usually the loudest person that can tell their story. And then the other people are just naturally listening and not being able to share necessarily their side. And so it's just a very interesting dynamic that I've come to learn and acknowledge and um, realize my gratitude for the show overall is that undivided attention and being able to thoroughly listen to another person and to reciprocate that. Yeah, I think that that's another thing about the virtual connections is it's teaching us how to, you know, like give each other that space, even Mm -hmm. in group setting on Zoom, which I was kind of comparing in my head as you were talking, you know, there are always going to be those people, certain people that are eager to share and they want to talk a lot and they raise their hand first and, (laughs) you know, they volunteer to talk and they'll take up the whole time if you let them. (laughs) And then there are always going to be those people that won't say anything at all. They might only want to participate in the chat or they might only want to feel comfortable opening up in a breakout room. That's like one-on-one, right? you know, and that is like me, I'm much more comfortable in a one-on-one setting in real life than I am in a group setting. And I think that forcibly being in this like virtual space together, it's teaching those extroverts to say, oh, okay, like, you know, I know I have something to say and I want to say it, but let me just hold space for someone else that might want to share. Otherwise, 
we just continue that pattern of, of taking up space. Some people taking up too much space and not giving the opportunity for others to do the same. And so I also just really appreciate this container that we have created on the Mm -hmm. podcast for people to do that or not, you know, and we, we meet you where you're at. So if you are one of those people that's eager to share, obviously, you know, that makes for (laughs) great conversation on the show. And if it's going to take you a minute, or if you prefer to email us or DM us or text us or leave us a voicemail on our phone number, then we welcome that as well. And just really honoring all the forms of communication that we have to connect with each other and, and build. Yeah, absolutely, Nani. And there's a book that I've come to love. It's called Quiet. If anyone's watching via video, it's called Quiet and it's by Susan Cain. She has a TED talk about the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. And there um, you go. (laughs) Yeah. And it gets, and she basically explains like, this is all like scientific stuff too. Like she references a lot of great resources. Like if I showed you my book, Nani, it's like, annotated, like in Uh every, like almost literally every page. Like I see my notes as I skim through it. But what this book really mentions is that the world is designed for extroverts. And she talks about the value of introverts. And, you know, even just the fact that we are often, for example, we tend to be better public speakers because we are more thoughtful in the messages that we put out there because it's a lot for us to exert that much energy, you know, Mm. to to go out there because there's a lot of stimulation when you put yourself out there. And so we are more intentional when we step out into the world and there's a lot of value about that, you know, and I know that people often think that I am extroverted because of how vocal I am, but that's because I've positioned myself as an introvert in the right spot to thrive and to be as vocal as I can be. So definitely kind of being in a lot of extrovert settings where it is about paying attention to the loudest person or the most interesting person. I definitely feel a little, I I don't say silence, but I, I definitely just I kind of hang out, honestly. I'm just like, oh, okay. I mean, you know, it it is what it is. Like, like this is their space, but I'm just glad that, you know, on our show, we've been able to create a space for us, right. To be able to thoroughly unpack things and have these kind of one-to-one conversations. And I just can't thank you enough, Nani, for even encouraging me and supporting me and the show to, you know, make this possible because if this wasn't needed, and again, this is also to our listeners, if you didn't need this, um, we wouldn't hear from you. We wouldn't hear, we wouldn't get your emails, your text messages, your voice messages, you know, your review, your five-star reviews. Thank you, by the way, you know, on our podcast, on Apple podcasts, we wouldn't get all that if this wasn't needed. So it kind of goes back to this whole collective experience of like, we are doing this because collectively we need it. And we can't just thank you all enough for emboldening us in a sense and encouraging us and inspiring us and giving us this sense of responsibility to keep showing up in the way that we're showing up. Yeah, we definitely welcome all the extroverts that are eager to share their story, but we're also holding space for the introverts and the people that, you know, like you said, are very stimulated by doing something like this or intimidated by it. And the, I don't know, I think it was Cynthia's interview that I was trying to quote something that Cad always says in his workshops, but it's coming back up for me now that the story belongs to the storyteller mm. and the lesson belongs to the listener. And so I think that that's just another key takeaway for what we're trying to say right now. Like we're here to listen and we're really trying to use the show as a container to learn better skills for communicating with each other. And yeah, just honoring who we are without trying to force our truths on anybody else or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So yes. Yeah. Lots of love. I don't know about you, Nani, but today I just, I feel like my heart's been glowing (laughs) just from when when we were talking to Kat, which you'll be hearing her next Friday. She's amazing. And by the way, Freshwater Colleges, Boundary Spanner and Filipina ex settler on Turtle Island, um, Filipino Canadian, a Filipina Canadian BT dubs. So that's going to be a fun story for all of you to look forward to next Friday, but my heart's been feeling full. And a lot of it has to do with my heart feeling empty (laughs) in recent weeks. Mm. So I feel like I'm kind of coming to this place of healing in which again, I'm excited to share with all of you in an upcoming episode on Christmas with Jen and Nani, which you can learn more about and subscribe ahead of time at biasboba.com. All right. Without further ado, Nani, let's go ahead and share some updates with our listeners here. So about two weeks ago, we had an incredible live workshop with Lynn Tugangi, which you could also hear her interview on episode 78 at tforproject.com. So Lynn had a live workshop titled how to handle negative self-talk, making an acquaintance instead of an enemy. 
I really enjoyed being a part of this live workshop with her, mainly because we talked a lot about the inner child and the inner critic. And if any of you didn't get a chance to watch it, once again, it is now archived on our Just Mr. Jenny Nani private podcast show at biasboba.com. But I was curious on your end, Nani, any reflections since then? Yeah, I'm actually just pulled up her slides since I was the one controlling the slideshow that day. That's right. I am just going back through it again. But what I really appreciated about Lynn, and I don't think that this was intentional on their part, but her workshop was really a great follow up to the one that the first one that we did with Marianne and how she really encouraged us to, you know, look within ourselves to learn how we can dismantle that crab mentality, not only within our community, but obviously starting with ourselves. And I think so much of that has to do with the inner critic inside our head, or like I called them in our workshop with Lynn's, the wolves inside our heads, Yeah, that kind of play as the devil and the angel on our shoulders, telling us what to do or shaming us for what we, you know, know we should or shouldn't do and upholding those expectations that may or may not apply. And so I think it's really important to name those things and learn how to verbalize what's going on in your head and the feedback loops that you're holding yourself prisoner to. Otherwise, you know, you just, you stay in that space. And Mm -hmm. again, you just, you're kind of running in place. And so I think Lynn did a great job of walking us through how to like recognize that, how to acknowledge that inner critic, how to invite her in and sit down with her and say like, Hey, let's be friends, you know? So yeah, I thought it was just a really great follow-up in this kind of theme of communication and mental health and yeah, just, just learning how to, again, connect deeper with each other through connecting deeper with ourselves. Yeah. You reminded me of what really stood out to me in Lynn's presentation that the inner critic needs to be heard too, right? Like instead of like, you know, kind of, you know, pushing her down, ignoring and silencing her and even shaming her, it's like, give her a platform. Now don't let her be the dominating voice in your head, but you know, maybe her voice is so dominant because she's trying to get your attention. Right. And so I really like that. She mentioned that to get to know it. And in the way, the context that you, the way you described it, you know, get to know the wolves in your head, get to know all the different voices, validate all of them and figure out how do we coexist? And then what do we do moving forward? And so that definitely stood out to me. And I just thought about this. I feel like the crab mentality is almost the byproduct of having an inner critic. You know, it's like that comes out, we're catty with other people, not necessarily because of other people, but because of the voices in our head. I think it just gets projected onto other people. And so, you know, again, I just absolutely love what we're getting from the Filipino mom cast um, in these live workshops and these live workshops so far, like you said, with Marianne, starting with how do we deal with the crab mentality? It starts from within. And then, you know, Lynn um, in detail, helping you unpack the inner voice in your head, the inner critic in your head, I just can't wait (laughs) to get to our next live workshop, Nani, which will take place tomorrow, which is Saturday, May 15th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And this is going to be a great presentation because first and foremost, we are having Rowan Deguia Samuels join us. And she is actually one of the early people we interviewed, Nani, in early stages of you being on the show, episode 34. And she is a Filipina psychotherapist, educator, one lucky mama, (laughs) and a wife. And she actually is the creator of the five Pinoy love languages. Now, if people know about the five love languages, of course that exists, but she really hones it in and specializes it or kind of has her take on it for the Filipino community specifically. And so her workshop taking place tomorrow, once again, May 15th at 1230 p.m. Pacific time, 330 p.m. Eastern time. And, and, she, and her workshop will be titled Collective Affection, the Untold Story of Filipinos on Love. Nani, any initial thoughts, maybe something that people could expect for the workshop tomorrow? I think that everyone I know, at least on Instagram, all my friends on Instagram, probably like 90% of them I've seen repost Rowan's kind of little graphics and story reels or whatever they're called, IG reels 
on the Pinoy love languages because it's just so profound. You know, we've all been introduced already to the idea of the five love languages and hopefully use them to strategize how we go about communicating in our own relationships to try and improve those bonds and just help people understand how we love and how we like to be loved. And I think because our Filipino culture is so strong and it plays so deeply into how we do connect and relate with people, it's really important to understand from a cultural perspective how we communicate love. Rowan is someone that I connected with very deeply from, you know, back in the day when we first interviewed her on episode 34. I don't even remember how I found her, how I came across her contact, but ever since we've been in touch and, you know, I've had my own personal relationship with her that's developed and she's just someone that I am extremely grateful for and really, really appreciate everything that I've been able to learn from her, both in our like private connection and also just on her Instagram and her blog and the content that she posts and produce on the Filipino mom cast. So she's been someone that I personally have been able to learn a lot from and who has helped me a lot in my own journey. So I'm just really looking forward to you guys getting a little taste of that and maybe about an hour plus or minus of her precious time to yeah, drop some gems just like Lynn and Marianne had. And I think that it will also be another great continuation in this series, what we can learn from our Filipino moms in the community. Yeah, absolutely. And even especially from our past guests, and this is again, why we're slowing down with our interviews, because we're building community on here. You know, it's one thing that I didn't I didn't know how it would turn out, you know, and I'm so glad it's been unfolding the way that has been or or snowballed, um, whatever analogy you want to use, but it's been so great to, again, slow down and, and really show our community, the past guests and, and what they're doing and letting them shine and also letting them lead the conversation. Right. It's like, it's just so fun to sort of sit back. I mean, I know you were managing the PowerPoint slides last time, but to just kind of sit back and listen and learn. And I hope that our I hope that our listeners who joined us live or even watched the replay have been learning a lot from these live workshops. And, you know, I was just thinking about this to myself. I was like, I wonder what Rowan is like when she's angry, because I can't picture it. <laughs> like, I just feel like she's always happy. And I mean, I know everyone has their sides, but I'm like, man, she just does a really good job just being amazing and being like, she's just like that light, like her face yeah. is like a flashlight. It's like, I'm here or like sun, you know, like just, it's just like, she lights up the room, even just in her presence and just how grateful she is. Like when we were having these offline conversations, planning for these workshops, I remember one of the first things she said was, I'm just grateful to be a part of this, you know, and it just really filled my heart. And again, yeah. you know, kudos to the ladies at the Filipino mom cast for just their amazingness, their hustle, and their willingness to want to collaborate with us because it's been such a great experience so far. Yeah. No, thank you for saying that about Rowan. You all will get to experience that tomorrow when you join her workshop with us, but That's one thing I think that originally really attracted me to her and really made me want to work with her specifically as a Pinai therapist. I know there are a few of them out there. We've even interviewed a number of them on this show. And I was just specifically really attracted to her because of that energy, that vibe that she gives off. It reminds me very much of my grandma Mm. and kind of that feeling of just like warmth and safety that you get when you're around her. Even if she's not the one leading the conversation, she just makes you feel like, I don't know, she's like a mama, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. And I hope you all get to, again, get a little taste of that tomorrow in her workshop. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, that is Rowan Degia Samuels. If you want to get to know her within the 12 hours before this live workshop, check out her interview episode 34. But yeah, she'll be talking to us about collective affection, the untold story of Filipinos on love tomorrow, Saturday, May 15th at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time and 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Awesome. All right. So that's what we have going on for tomorrow. And So just some other general updates here. I'm just going to, in no particular order, you know, we never really promoted this Nani, but we have people reaching out to us all the time about podcasting and like, how do they start a podcast? How do they get involved? And I actually have been working on this for some time now. I've been planning to roll this out later after our paper is out, but people are reaching out to us about consultation. And so 
we just want to put it out there and let you all know that we are open to, you know, giving you advice. Like, should you be interested in starting your podcast, but without, without like, you know, disclosing, um, who we've recently talked with Nani, um, maybe share some of our experiences of what it's like to been talking to people so far interested in starting a podcast. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just feel really honored that people are reaching out to us. Yeah. because I think that if you're a day one listener of the Tifa project, then, you know, we've really grown a lot on the show and we really (laughs) just like dove right into it head first at the beginning and have figured out what we're doing along the way. And I think Mm -hmm. a lot of you guys have been able to witness that. And maybe that's why you feel such a deep connection with us because we did really humanize ourselves in that Mm -hmm. way to begin with. And so it means a lot that now people are, you know, seeking out our advice specifically on starting a podcast. And it's kind of a sign that we're doing something right, you know, because (laughs) whether or not we went about it in like a traditionally professional way or appropriate way, it's impacting people. And I think that's the point. So I just want to be acknowledging and appreciative of that first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been great to connect with other women of color who are, you know, aligned in their purpose, in their passion, who have a clear vision of what they want to do. They just don't know how to do it because I think that is uh, really comparable to how we felt when we first started doing this two years ago. So um, yeah, it's been nice to reflect back on our experience, our podcasting experience from a perspective of giving somebody else advice. And yeah, we're just excited to kind of see after those consultations, what these people produce and the content that they come up with and just kind of observe the the growth of their own projects, um, yeah. just like we have with the people that um, some of the people that we've interviewed or connected with through this project that have already started their own podcasts or other types of projects. Like it makes me so proud, Yeah, (laughs) you know, just really honored first and secondly, really proud. And third, just ecstatic to see the way that we're all amplifying our representation and really taking that, like owning our space to do so. And, you know, the more and more we realize how accessible podcasting is, as a platform to do that, to take up that space, to represent for our community, to normalize these conversations. I think that the more and the faster we can advance our culture and our community. And so it's just, it's such important work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything you said, I second everything that you said. (laughs) And so, you know, we have plans of furthering our mission to encourage all of you to amplify your voices and in this context through podcasting. So whether you are interested in speaking with us directly, or you want to continue to get updates on that, on what we're planning on rolling out in the upcoming weeks, if not months, we're very much like build as you go kind of thing. And I very much believe in building something right, not fast. Um, I learned the hard way in my second business venture to not do things, actually first two business ventures of not doing things fast, but doing things right. And this feels right to me, Nani. It was interesting because I was talking to Scott about this and I was like, I was like, honey, like I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling the imposter syndrome all of a sudden. And it's exciting because it means that I'm growing, (laughs) you know? And I was telling him that I was like, rather than being afraid of it, I was actually excited about it. And if I felt that a decade ago, Nani, oh my gosh, like I would have ran away. And the fact that I'm in a space now where it's like, oh my gosh, this is exciting. Like we're evolving. I can name that and I can understand why I'm feeling that. And I can say, oh, this is a sign. Like you said, it's not, you know, something that I'm actually, it's not a truth or like a part of my identity. It's a sign that I've, I've been here before and I know what comes next. And (laughs) so I know I now have something to look forward to because I'm feeling this feeling. Yeah. 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 So it was just, it was just so amazing. So, you know, with that being said, all of this is possible because you all also have helped us build that foundation, that conviction to show up. So just know that this is because of you. (laughs) And without further ado, like I mentioned, if you want to, if you even want to inquire about like what we have rolling out in the future in regards to helping you further amplify your voice through podcasting, feel free to text us 415-484-8329. Again, that's 415-484-8329. And of course you can find us, you know, our emails, jen at tifaproject.com, nani at tifaproject.com or our website, tifaproject.com. There's a lot of ways to get a hold of us. (laughs) And a lot of you have reached out. So I just wanted to 
start acknowledging that publicly because this has been happening kind of behind the scenes, Nani. And so it's like, okay, well, this is, there's clearly something going on here. So let's tell everyone else like what's going on (laughs) so that you know that there's that opportunity for you. So speaking of which you were hinting, we were talking a little bit about the importance of podcasting and how everyone can get started. And so we are pretty excited. We haven't really talked about this publicly yet, mainly just through our newsletter. I think Nani are just in the last newsletter that came out at the time of this recording. But we've been working really closely with Stacy from the Belosan Center at UC Davis. And if you want to hear a little bit about her and her amazingness, which I actually realized we haven't mentioned her name in the recent episodes, Nani, and we usually do like almost every episode. So I hope Stacy doesn't freak out the fact that I'm mentioning her name. <laughs> but um, if you want to hear a little bit about her, she did come. She was our special guest for episode 100 of our show. And so feel free to go back to that and listen if you want to learn more about the Belosan Center at UC Davis and also Stacy and her just amazingness. But for weeks, we have been working on an academic paper with her that has recently been accepted at the Bulosan Center for Filipino Studies Conference Committee. And so we are actually going to be presenting this paper. So put this on your calendar. It's Friday, May 28th. And the time frame, I believe, just put this on your calendar. I, I forgot the time frame, Nani. I think it was like 345 or something. But basically, like save the day on your calendar for Friday, May 28th from 1 to 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Or we are not going to be on the second day, but they do have it. It is a two day event. The second day is going to be Saturday, May 29th from one to 6 p.m. PST or PST um, Pacific time. And so we are actually presenting on Friday, May 28th to talk about our paper. And our paper is titled, here it is. It's titled Panay Podcasters, Building a Self-Sustaining Community Through Storytelling, Collective Healing and Learning and Collaboration. Um, Now, Nani has worked the most on this piece of paper because she is a writer and she aspires to continue to challenge herself as a writer. So Nani, real quickly, because you've worked so hard on this, tell our listeners a little bit about this paper and why they should join us at this conference to learn more about it. Thank you first for that continued acknowledgement. (laughs) Uh, Whenever we talk about this, it does mean a lot because I did work really hard on it and it was quite a challenge for someone who didn't go to college and hasn't gone to school in a very long time (laughs) or been involved in like academia really in any way other than (laughs) connecting with people on this platform that that are or living vicariously through like my friends experiences who all are pretty active in higher academia so it was kind of an eye-opening experience I guess to have to write something in that kind of format because a lot of my writing as I've mentioned before has been very free-flowing very just journal entry <laughs> type of style. So this was this was different. It was challenging. It was fun. While I don't really enjoy like the timeline kind of deadlines, it was nice to have that extra push to like get it done and put it together. And you know, I'm just happy to be able to look back on it now and say like that's a pride point in my writing career that I can now use as a staple to showcase, I guess, my my skills. And it's not a finished product. We're going to continue to refine it and add to it and, you know, edit it in the coming months for whatever we are going to be doing with it in terms of helping out or becoming a resource for other Panais looking for advice or guidance in creating their own podcasts or are just interested in learning about how podcasting is really transforming the media space in this day and age and how we are specifically carving that space for the Philam community to exist, to thrive, to connect, to build, et cetera. So yeah, it's just, it's really meaningful work and I'm very proud of it. And I'm excited to dive back into it maybe after we present it. (laughs) for the conference, then we can dive back into it again and figure out what we may want to tweak. And, you know, depending on the direction that we're going to be taking it and how we're going to be marketing it to you guys, see what else we can throw in there for you. Yeah. And I mentioned this in our Slack channel, whenever we would talk about it. And as I would read it, I mean, no joke, Nani, I kept tearing up every time I read it when I just genuinely like sat there and read it from beginning to end. 
like I'd be in the living room and like, you know, Scott's like across from me. We always like, whenever I'm not in my office, I'm basically sitting in front of him, like working, but yeah. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> just like doing this. And he's, he's just like, like, are you okay? <laughs> I was, and like, literally I was like, I was like, this is so beautiful. And the reason why it's so beautiful to me is because I started this project alone, you know, and although I did have a co-host in the past, shout out to Giselle, life happened, you know, and then I moved and there was just so many things. And, you know, to me, I feel like this paper is a, a byproduct of our relationship and even your own like personal and professional growth. And I'm just glad to have provided a space for you to to thrive. You know, that's just very much like the big sister in me, you know, like having, have, being a big sister myself, it's like, it's like, um, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that I created that space. I'm so glad that, you know, I, I had faith in this. I had faith in myself that I would find these types of people in my life to want to grow in this kind of capacity. So it was just so meaningful and emotional for me to read it. And I'm pretty sure if I sit down and read it again, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional, but I just, I want to share publicly, like how much it has meant for me to work with you and to see just your own you know, progress and, you know, and you as a writer. And I think, like you said, this is, this should be a pride point for you, you know, because I think both of us didn't think we could do it first and foremost. Like I remember yeah. when Stacy brought it up, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, amongst doing a million other things. And then the more serious it got, I was like, oh my God, like we're writing an academic paper, you know, like it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So There's I'm no just turning excited. back now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited that we got like you know, the best draft we have right now to talk about at the Bulozon Center for Filipino Studies conference. And I say committee because it was the committee that approved us. But yeah, we were just really excited and we hope that you'll be a part of that. So once again, that is Friday, May 28th. Um, still, free, We'll announce the time again, specifically as the date gets closer, but put it on the calendar for one o'clock to 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. That is, if I could do the math, 4 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. I got that on May 28th. And we'd love to see you there. We'd love your support. And yeah, it, it's just going to be great. So I can't thank Nani enough for doing this with me and continuing to do the show with me and just everything. Just, I just, yeah. I'm just appreciative of everything. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm appreciative of, of you as well. And I think that not only is the paper kind of a culmination of all the things that we talk about on the show, all the lessons that we've collected from other people, all the kind of community collaborative conversations that we've been able to hold space for, but it's also like I said in the beginning of this episode, really an outline of how we started and how we just kind of aligned on one purpose and one passion and then built this whole relationship, you know, both on the podcast and offline as well, you know, not only as co-hosts, but also as sisters. And so I hope that by reading the paper, really being able to appreciate our relationship with our community also really reflecting on our relationship and how much we've grown together because I don't think I would have really taken that bet on myself and, you know, been up for any of these challenges to advance my own career or create opportunities for myself in my own career. If it wasn't for you and the encouragement that you've given me along the way and the opportunities that you've provided me with, or that you've made possible for me through this show. So I want to, you know, not negate that at all because that's a, a huge piece of how we got here and why we're doing this paper. Yeah. So yeah, just thank you for everything. <laughs> You're welcome. This is platonic, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we swear. <laughs> yes, we both have, you have a fiance, I have a husband. No, but seriously, the, the sisterly love, right? It's everything. And I'm just grateful. And I'm so excited when we could start doing things in person again. We're going to be unstoppable. So beware y'all. <laughs> yeah. We had one live event, which we had a pretty good turnout for. We should find the number of that episode, but it was recorded somewhere on the podcast. And that was just so much fun. It was an intimate event, but it was also lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. We had a great conversation. We got to get the perspectives of some of our like day one listeners that were really, really heavily invested in the show, including Stacy. Yes, that's right. That's when I first met her in person, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so um, I think that during the pandemic, I kind of lost sight of the possibility of doing that since we're just so used to this um, working from home kind of deal and connecting with people virtually. You forget yeah. sometimes that like, oh, eventually, you know, who knows when, hopefully sooner than later, but 
eventually we are going to come out of this and like go back to living lives and go back to being able to travel and get together in person. And so we do really look forward to meeting more of you guys in person when that does become the case again. And I don't think we've checked our statistics here on the show in a while. And I'm sure that the Bay Area is still up there, if not number one, but we're definitely going to keep our eye on that and be making plans to come to the other cities and the other places that are showing lots of love too, in terms of our listenership. And so, yeah, that's something for you guys to be able to look forward to, to be able to participate live in some kind of fun event or recording that we will host near you. Yeah, absolutely. In case you all are interested in that live event that we had, just check it out. Episodes 41 and 42. This was a well over a year ago. This was, I mean, this was published in January, 2020, start of pandemic, but we recorded this. I remember in December during a birthday month and December, right. 2019, when I was in the last time I was in California, Yeah, <laughs> it was just, it's so bizarre, but yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up and we're just excited when things open up again. And in case anyone is wondering, since you brought up analytics, I can pull it up really easily here. Let's see real quickly. I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, uh, no, I'm just curious. Yeah. So in regards to like the top, top places, of course, California is where we have most of our listeners. So shout out Cali, California and everyone there. And in case anyone's wondering, let me see, where's the top place right now? (laughs) You're not going to like this, Nani. (laughs) It's not somewhere in the Bay. (laughs) So the top places, the top place right now is SoCal. So SoCal is leading. (laughs) Uh, specifically yes specifically LA and San Diego so San Diego it's funny when I leave (laughs) now they listen (laughs) Um, (laughs) yeah so I wonder if that's my family like all my relatives but uh, yeah so LA and San Diego and then San Francisco is is up there and then actually Chicago is up there as well. So the top five cities just, or I'm, I'm actually going to say six, because I think you all will appreciate this. So LA, San Diego, San Francisco, Chicago, San Jose, and Seattle, Washington. So wow. shout out to y'all. I mean, this is obviously there's more places and we can have a whole other episode just talking about the locations, but yeah, you know, everyone's showing up and we love it. And if you want more representation in your state, <laughs> or city. Tell all your friends. Yeah. Share it with everyone. But you know, this doesn't represent the entire population. Obviously we have like, you know, we have listeners from all over. I think like, actually, I remember I was looking at the map and there's only like one place right now. I'm looking at the map. There's only one state where we don't have someone. And Mm. I think it's Kansas. (laughs) It looks like Kansas. It's not even showing up because it doesn't like, there's no numbers there, but Kansas is, I think the only place. So if you're in Kansas, represent reach out to yeah, us, let us, know reach that out to us and let us know that you exist otherwise yeah. <laughs> I can't say I'm I'm surprised honestly but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean I've never that, been to we, we've covered all the states Nani like no joke I, I wasn't going to get into analytics today but everywhere I mean I see yeah I see Louisiana Mississippi like the south like the south is listening to us Texas Midwest but yeah Kansas is like literally the only one even Alaska we even have listeners in Alaska oh yeah it's amazing and that's just America alone there's other places I can you know give a shout out to like we do have our family there as well and all that but uh, again just amazing in case you're anyone who's curious about the recent stats so far where our listeners are from yeah um So with that said, everyone, obviously, if the show or or because the show has impacted you in a very positive way, the next thing I want to invite you all is to come and vote and participate in the Quill Podcast Awards. So this is an awards that's given by Captivate, which is where we do our web hosting and also is a sponsor of the show. If you actually go to the, if you actually visit the kind of like the the play button or something of this episode, if you go to donate, I believe it actually takes you to Captivate. But yeah, there is another awards coming out. And if you want to support us and get us nominated, it's as easy as visiting the link in the show notes of this episode 
and just nominating our show. So it's a Quill Podcast Awards. It's available. It's free to apply. And this is actually really advantageous because there are some podcast shows where you legitimately have to pay to, I mean, with many award shows, you have to pay to apply. Just fun fact there in case anyone's wondering. It's like, nope, people don't just give you awards. Sometimes you have to actually pay and apply for it. But this is actually free. And so if you check out the show notes of this episode, we'd love for you to nominate our show if you really love it. One vote per person. And the more people we have that vote for us after May 26 is when the voting closes, they're going to take like the top five most voted shows and judge those and see who wins the awards. But there's a lot of selections there for you to nominate our show. We do have that information in the the last newsletter and I'll continue to keep it in there until the voting closes. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that Nani, that there's another opportunity to possibly apply for an award and not every podcaster like applies for awards, but for me, it's important to get that recognition and to show you all how hardworking we are on the show and also like to do this collectively. Like this is a collective experience. It's like, if you want to get recognized, if you want our voices to be heard, help us get nominated because your voice matters in this sense. Any thoughts on that, Nani? Vote for us. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) That's it. Basically. (laughs) That's probably, that's probably all I should have said. Vote for us. Yeah. Quill podcast awards. Feel free to Google it as well. Quill is spelled Q-U-I-L-L podcast awards. It is provided in our last newsletter and also in the show notes of this episode. So feel free to check that out. And it actually asks you when you do apply and nominate our show to include the direct link to our Apple podcast or our Spotify podcast. And so I also included that link in the newsletter. So you can literally just copy and paste it. So you don't have to search for, you know, the RSS feed or the, or the direct, the direct URL to our podcast show. Other than that, as we start to wrap up here, Nani, I want to go ahead and acknowledge some of our Bias Boba members and people who've contributed to us at biasboba.com. So remember, we are starting to, in the upcoming episodes or upcoming weeks, we are going to be releasing exclusive content on Chismas with Jen and Nani. So right now we're just archiving our live events, but we are actually going to be diving into deeper topics in our personal lives, starting with mine, I think. I think that I'm probably more open about sharing my personal issues. But yeah, we're going to be sharing more stuff in our lives and what it means to us as Filipino American women and what we can do moving forward. But again, you can learn all about that and apply and be a part of that private podcast at biasboba.com. So with that said, I want to give a shout out to April Whirl, who actually was a guest on our show, who recently bought us a cup of boba. So April, shout out to you. And let me see here real briefly. If you want to check out April, her episode is episode 94. And she just thanked us again on our bias below the page. She said, Salamat kayo for all the the work that you guys are doing. So thank you, April, so much for that. And Nani, we have two new members. So quick shout out here. I've actually been talking to Jeremy Montan. So Jeremy, shout out to you. His full name is Jeremy Sampana Montan. So please forgive me if I pronounce that wrong, but I want to make sure I give you a shout out. He's actually been messaging us on on Instagram. So I've been direct messaging him and he's been really moved by our show. So it's really cool to, you know, have, you know, a different listener than what we're expecting to be on the show. And I mean, to listen to the show in this case, a male. So Jeremy, shout out to you. Thank you for being involved. Nani, I don't know if you have any thoughts you want to share to Jeremy. (laughs) No, welcome, Jeremy. We really appreciate your support and thank you for reaching out. I really love that you know, there are so many kind of new cans of worms that we're opening with our private podcast platform just with Jen and Nani. And one of them is being able to connect and build community with non-Philam women. Yeah. And so whether that means, you know, people from our own family or people that we're married to or friends or whoever wants to weigh in on the Filipino American experience from a different perspective or an outside perspective. I think this is such a great opportunity to do that. And we're just really happy. I think we've got now three men as a Mm -hmm. part of our membership. Two of them may or may not be my fiance and my dad, but, (laughs) 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 but yeah, we're really excited to be connecting, like just expanding our community basically and being more inclusive of, you know, what you guys have to share as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I always tell, I mean, not always, but I have to mention this again. If you all want to know Kad's username on (laughs) biasboba.com, it's amazing. It makes me laugh. It makes Nani uncomfortable, but... (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just letting y'all know if there's anything you want to do, even just to visit biasboba.com to see what CAD's username is. Yeah, just um, for entertainment, I guess you can go since it's public <laughs> and I cannot from the back end go and change it. <laughs> Yeah, so, so there's that. So enjoy. And uh, last but not least, I want to give a shout out to Maria Ingraham, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Maria Ingraham. Thank you so much for being a member. We just overall look forward to getting to know all of you. And, you know, we plan on doing more engagement on biasboba.com right now. We're just more in like the publishing mindset, like, okay, let's get, let's get this out there. Let's be consistent, but just know that you know, we do plan on engaging with you more. So thank you, Maria, for joining us on biasboba.com. Um, and other than that, uh, Nani, I think I think we've covered all our bases here in regards to our updates. I feel really good about everything I really needed today. I didn't know that I needed today until we were in it. So I just want to thank you again for co-hosting with me as always. And yeah, that's it. I mean, any closing thoughts before we go? No, just welcome to Maria and Jeremy. Thank you both for your support. We look forward to building community with you both. And yeah, just look forward to that exclusive content that you now have access to that we're going to be pushing out and all the chismas that we're going to be sharing on that platform. We look forward to just sharing more of ourselves with you guys as well. And also thank you, April, for your support for the boba. We appreciate yeah. it. And <laughs> maybe in our next recording, we can have our boba here. I to, know. Um, I really, I really need keep to meaning that. to do that. And then we don't do it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I can make boba at home. You know, it's like, no, I, just, I have like, everything to make it too, but I just am so lazy. I would rather <laughs> order some delivery from literally two blocks away. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, with that said, we want to thank you all again so much for your continuous support. We hope that you get a lot out of these episodes as well, since it's just mainly Nani and I. I hope that we're enough for you. <laughs> but no, we really just want to continue to keep you in the loop of what we're doing behind the scenes and plan on going moving forward. So thank you all so much again. And I already mentioned a bunch of call to actions, but again, if you want to get a hold of us, 415-484-8329 or visit our website, tforproject.com. So we love you all and we'll talk to you all again soon. Take care. We love you. Bye guys.